Wildlife and people come in conflict generally in ways that have to do with people moving into wildlife habitat and the animals are still there. Most of what we deal with in the Southwest is conflict between Mexican wolves and cattle. Mexican wolves don't eat a lot of cattle, but if they're your cattle, it makes a difference. The area that I work in, we have seen this as a rising problem. With bears, it has occurred for quite a long time, but the number of bears in some areas, uh, very thankfully, has risen. But along with that, there has been a rise in the number of conflict situations. Typically, wildlife will pass through an area and not come into conflict with people unless there are things called attractants. So it's food, it's garbage, it's other things that either an animal finds and they're curious about, or it's actually a source of food that's easier than their own food. The animals aren't the problem generally because they're behaving as they always have. It's humans either knowing or unknowingly creating the nuisance. In the past, the conflicts between humans and wildlife generally came out with the humans ridding as much of the wildlife that they considered to be vermin or problems uh, as they could. So it was generally a matter of wildlife losing out. Take some of our most spectacular predators, wolves and grizzly bears. When the West was developing, wolves and grizzly bears were uh, varmints or, or considered predators on a growing economic way of life, and so they were just eliminated. The biggest problem with resolving conflicts by lethal control, particularly with predators, is you eliminate one of the most important animals on the landscape. So top predators like wolves are a very important player in the natural system and they, uh, you know, the science is increasingly showing just how important they are. Everything that keeps nature in balance comes from the top down. There's this whole explosion of life that all has to do with the fact that you put these top predators back. Just all by themselves, you bring the predators back and you get healthy landscapes. For example, when they feed on whatever they are preying on, they don't fully eat that item. And by leaving part of that animal behind, it provides food for other animals in that ecosystem. So when you remove them from the ecosystem, it really has a very comprehensive impact on the whole system, and it's never for the good. For about 15 years, Defenders of Wildlife has been promoting a better approach to managing wildlife conflicts, which is non-lethal strategies to reduce and eliminate those conflicts, to keep predators on even landscapes where there is agriculture and ranching going on because it's a significant portion of the landscape. The way that Defenders is approaching this whole issue is to try and assist people and try and bring um, peaceful coexistence, so to speak, uh, to a region. There are a number of ways in which Defenders approaches this. Everything from bringing information to people about how to take care of their property in a way that doesn't attract wildlife. There are also matters of trying to help with funding. A good example of our coexistence work is our Wood River project in central, south central Idaho. At any given time, there were up to four wolf packs that could be in this area. The wolves are in an area where there's also livestock. Some of the largest sheep operations in the state, and wolves kill more sheep than they do any other type of livestock. So we picked the hardest place, basically. Our view about wolves was that certainly they present some challenges for our operation, our sheep operation, but we also recognize that wolves are an important part of a fully functioning ecosystem. And so when we first found that we had lost sheep to wolves, our first instinct was, well, what is a way that we're gonna be able to coexist with these animals? With wolves, some of the main tools include fencing, loud noises, guard dogs, human presence, Fladry, which is basically rope with red flags tied to it. The flapping of the flags is a deterrent to wolves. So far this year, we've only lost one sheep out of 10,000. Over the three years of this project now, we've lost less than two dozen sheep. Um, so we've done a good job. We've been able to prove that wolves can live with livestock. 
we're happy with the project because the ranchers are happy with the project. And when they believe that they can live with wolves, then we've really achieved our goal. Defenders of Wildlife has been in the wildlife business for 65 years now. And we've learned that we all do better when we look at long-term conservation outcomes and that we look to solve the challenges versus decide who's going to win and who's going to lose. By acknowledging the conflicts and working to reduce the challenges and to increase social tolerance for wolves or social tolerance for migrating species, grizzly bears, is a win-win way of addressing the needs of society and the needs of nature. The goal is going to be for us to make sure that people who see coexistence tools and how they work are able to share what they learn with other communities. And I think positive word of mouth will allow us to do more of it. Well, I think it's necessary for humans and wildlife to coexist. And that's one of the main reasons why we wanted to move back to Western Montana is because of the natural setting and the wildlife that are so abundant in the region. We've done the barrier fence around about half of our land, but we have great habitat just outside the fence that we wanted to keep in a natural setting, uh, specifically for the wildlife, because they're very important to the ecosystem and to our way of life here. If we're proactive about land management, I think we can coexist in these natural settings nicely. Ultimately, what we're looking for is to have wildlife populations that are in their natural habitat and living out the lives that are appropriate for them, eating their wild foods, raising their young in enough area that they survive well into the future, and that people also can be living out their lives feeling safe and also appreciating the wildlife around them.